Hi guys, my name's George, I'm a UK medical student and welcome back to an Insider's Guide to Medical School. Today we're going to talk about two things. Number one, what sort of GCSEs you need to get to get into medical school. And number two, the sort of A-levels you need to choose to do for your application to be effective. This episode isn't going to be an exhaustive list of all the entry requirements for every medical school. But what it should do is give you a general idea of what you need to have and give you the tools to be able to make the right decision for you. So, let's talk about GCSEs. When you look at the entry requirements to each medical school online, you'll probably be surprised to see that a lot of them have B's and C's as minimum requirements. However, don't be fooled into a false sense of security by this. Medicine is very competitive with an average of 11 applications for every place given. This means that even though you could apply with grade C, you'll probably be competing with people who've got A's and A stars in that subject. Having said that, just because you've got B's and C's in some of your subjects doesn't mean you won't get in. Realistically, you'll need a good number of A's and A stars to have a chance of getting an interview. Some medical schools put more of an emphasis on GCSEs than others do. The BMJ has a great resource that you can use. Just type BMJ Medical School Selector into your search engine and you'll find that they have a calculator that you can type in all your qualifications and it'll bring up what medical schools you'll be able to apply to. This will hopefully give you a picture of where your GCSEs will let you go to. If I was going to give you one take home message for your GCSEs, it would be to aim high and do as well as you possibly can and to ensure that you do well enough to take the subject you need to A-level. Before we move on to A-level choices, but some of you may be thinking, well that's all very well and good George, but I've done my GCSEs and I don't have a load of A's and A stars. Is it all over for me then? Well the answer to that is no, it's not game over for you. If you have very few or no A stars at GCSE, you might struggle to get in if you apply whilst you're still at sixth form. But if you apply when you've already got good A-levels under your belt, i.e. straight A's and above, you'll find that your chances will improve dramatically. Of course this means that you'll have to take a year out between school and university. But this isn't such a bad thing. Loads and loads of people that I'm at medical school with took a year out. So don't switch off just yet. Okay, let's talk about A-level choices. If you want to do medicine, then choosing your A-levels should be easy, because half your decisions are made for you already. Chemistry is an absolute must as a subject choice for most universities. And for the vast majority of places, you'll also need to do another science subject. This leaves you with either physics or biology. And most people would choose biology because it's more related to medicine than physics is. However, some medical schools will require both chemistry and biology. Most important thing here is to make sure that you check your eligibility with each medical school before you apply. The other A-level choices are pretty much up to you. A lot of people choose physics or maths, which is fine, but there's nothing wrong with choosing more art-based subjects, such as English or history. Subjects like critical thinking and general studies aren't considered by most medical schools. Also, further maths is rarely considered as a separate A-level to maths. So check for this online. The student room has compiled a great list of all the medical schools and their requirements. The link for this is in the video description below. In this episode we talked about GCSE and A-level requirements. The take home message for GCSEs is to get as many A stars as you possibly can. And the take home message for A-level choices is that you'll most likely have to do chemistry and biology, but the other two subjects is generally up to you. Next time we'll be talking about how to approach which medical schools you'll apply to. Thanks very much for watching, see you next time.